Welcome to the Financial Jungle. This is Sher Khan Podcast. Hi, uh, thank you so much. <clears throat> so, Gautam Kalia here. I'm the head of investment solutions at Sher Khan. <clears throat> thank you so much for joining us uh, this morning uh, for the call. Uh, so, just to give some background on why we set this call up, and uh, then I'll introduce Gaurav as well. Uh, uh, Franklin Templeton on Thursday announced the closure of six of its schemes, and uh, some of its schemes, uh, you know, in one of the schemes also includes the ultra short-term fund, uh, which uh, normally investors would think of uh, as being super safe uh, for keeping money for short-term purposes. uh but obviously it had the credit holdings and this uh, segment of the market which was uh for less liquidity and uh, because of increased redemption pressure from uh, various investors uh it uh, franklin templeton took the decision uh prudent decision to protect all of its investors because in these cases mostly the retail and hni investors get impacted institutional investors are first out of the door uh but uh it's to protect all its investors to uh close the fund down they will obviously not be having any charges uh management fee uh, while the fund is closing down and then they will uh, go on to liquidate the assets and transfer the funds to the client uh as and when that happens and no uh, purchase and redemptions are allowed in those schemes uh during this time anymore so essentially if you are invested in those funds your money is stuck till it is returned to you uh the the reason why they done that is otherwise everyone would have ended up holding just the liquid part uh and they would have uh, the first person out of the gate would have uh, gone ahead with all of the money so now everyone is stuck but at the same time uh they will get their liquidity uh, gradually as and when they are able to sell off now this has led to uh different questions from our clients some clients asking are other debt fund safe and uh, since thursday evening numerous amcs have come forth uh telling us that their style of managing funds is different it is superior it is better uh their philosophy is more aligned uh to managing liquidity risk better uh, their portfolios are much more liquid so there is no need to uh, uh worry in fact uh, even mp addressed uh the country through mass media uh talking about uh, the fact that uh, that fund was safe so that all that has happened on friday uh, then there was this news item uh, that came over the weekend where the uh, ministry of finance is asking rbi to step in to provide some sort of liquidity window uh and finally in the morning rbi today at around 9:30 has issued a circular notice announcing a 50000 crore liquidity window so uh, really before rbi made that announcement i think the conversation was going to be about whether li- debt funds are safe or not i think now the uh, conversation should be about what is what really is this window and does that is that like a bazooka to keep uh, everyone's fears assuaged everyone can feel safer now uh, especially because mutual fund has been designed by the regulator as a common man product so is it really uh, can one rest assured now given that rbi has stepped in that uh, nothing uh, else is going to happen similar to what happened with fd on uh, fd on uh, thursday So to provide more information on this uh, I like to now introduce Gaurav uh, Gaurav Parija is the head of sales and marketing at IDFC AMC uh, he is responsible for driving uh, accelerated business growth uh, working with a seasoned sales and marketing team across India uh, he has been associated with IDFC AMC since March 2017 before that he was actually with Franklin Templeton as director uh responsible for new initiatives and business development in the senior india region uh before that he was the national sales head uh again for fashion templeton uh he is a uh, pgdb and uh, from i am bangalore the reason why we called him is because idfc uh is plays a major role in mc as well and that's why uh, he'll uh, be able to guide us on the way forward uh so Gaurav uh, 
thanks for joining the call just wanted to check with you uh, should uh, now investors uh, uh, be comfortable investing in debt fund given that rbi has just now uh firstly good morning everyone and thank you for joining the call and uh, thanks welcome for having me here uh i think not withstanding what has happened over friday and uh, uh, the announcement by rbi uh, i always we always maintain that uh, debt funds uh, barring the incident which happened in some of the funds uh, uh, banking capital which to be fair they are the best in this position to answer i don't think debt funds had any issues uh, apart from that uh, obviously the news creates a lot of concern apprehension and uh, angst with investors and distribution partners uh, but in times like this typically emotional behavior aspect takes over uh, and what i thought is necessary was to just put things in perspective uh, the total debt fund industry as of april 23 uh, was close to 13 lakh crores uh, of the 13 lakh crores 41% was actually in liquid and overnight which is basically money on call money on tap Uh, the total exposure the industry had uh, to credit risk funds was only 4% and hence if you to look at the rating profile of the entire 13 lakh crores close to 90% was held in triple a bonds uh, which basically then suggests that uh, while there was this big news and concern uh, the debt mutual fund industry continues to be a fairly solid and robust place to invest in uh not expanding that there would be a little bit of uh, redemptions and uh, uh, concern but from a data perspective this is clearly a very very sound and safe place having said that uh, let me also put a caveat and uh, i don't want to appear naive and uh, uh, foolish in not stating that that any financial industry if there is a much larger than usual run on the money no financial services industry can hold and to that extent it would be foolish to assume that if tomorrow 9 out of 10 investors decide to walk out of mutual funds everything may be anti doing but like i said on a business as usual perspective or even at a little heightened risk assessment we are very very comfortable with it and when i say we it is the industry and talking about right gaurav uh, gaurav uh, Uh, thanks for that uh, uh, you know overview that gives a sense of how much of money is actually in liquid and overnight which kind of gives uh, gives me confidence to understand that there is actually a lot uh, of liquidity uh, but having said that there still uh, seem to be the need for rbi intervention obviously i'm sure this is not uh, happened uh, without effort on part of uh, amfi uh you know and it's uh, quasi regulatory uh, authority in terms of influencing uh, uh, decision makers at all levels of government to come in and support the industry and i must say i'm quite impressed that it has happened over the over uh, such a short period of time uh so i just like to understand what exactly has rbi announced and what does that mean So I think uh, firstly, this instance has already happened in the past in 2008 when the global financial crisis happened. RBI also had stepped in and uh, provided a special window. Uh, what basically RBI has done today is it's opened up an additional special window of borrowing for the banks or up to 50,000 crores to invest in up to investment grade paper or mutual funds. What this means is it is not that the banks will purchase the bonds or the paper from the mutual fund industry. the banks will just take this money from rbi and lend it to mutual funds for up to 90 days against the collateral of the papers we hold so it is a window of borrowing for the mutual fund industry which was getting limited because uh, banks are not keen to extend this so this is an additional uh, liquidity tool please also remember and it's important to highlight in the call that over the last one or two months rbi has been pumping uh, a lot of liquidity into the system through what it is NTRO long term repo operation and the targeted NTRO so the total quantum between this two is actually a staggering 2.25 lakh crores uh the government has and RBI has also added 50000 crores of special refinancing to institutions like SBI and other so all in all the amount of liquidity banks can tap into 
to buy into corporate bonds is huge. I think there was a little bit of uh, resistance for banks to buy uh, papers beyond a certain industry rate by opening up this window. RBI is pretty much giving a blanket comfort that look, this is an additional window. You can take this money to uh, ease out. Uh, I would conclude this part by saying that uh, as an industry, our assessment is like in 2008, we may not fully utilize it, but this just gives us that very, very strong comfort that if push comes to shove, we can tap into a pretty much a dedicated window of borrowing, which is only for mutual funds. Right. Gaurav, so uh, before this announcement, I was, uh, I was quite clear that, uh, you know, I would tell my clients to... Uh, uh, withdraw all their money from debt and stay on the sidelines and wait for some sort of golden parachute to come. Uh, you know, because from a retail investor perspective, if there is no exit load and, uh, you know, three years are up in the debt case and tax is also slightly better, uh, tax implications are also slightly better, uh, the, uh, the risk return kind of seem to be uh, in favor of just staying uh, completely in cash and just waiting it out to see what happens, let the storm pass. Uh, and that was uh, what where I was at over the weekend, uh, thinking that that's probably what our investors should be doing. Uh, and maybe that was wrong because obviously we knew that there was something happening in the background in terms of the regulator, uh, regulator stepping in. And now we've seen that uh, result taking place. So, uh, would you tell uh, uh, your investors now uh, to stay invested? Is is fifty thousand crores uh, a big enough gun? So, I would uh, break this into two parts. Okay, uh, what you and your relationship managers and the research team advise, I think you are in the best position, given that you know the clients far better. Uh, but the approach I would have taken or we've advocated is, uh, look, there are clearly different elements of the market we're talking about. Uh, for example, if you are holding a fund which is 99 to 100% AAA and the likes of AAA are governments, SDL papers, uh, uh, PFCs, the Bajaj finances, LPFC trains and all, in effect, you take the money out of uh, my fund and let's say move it into a liquid. The underlying of the liquid is also pretty much going back into these entities. Now, if you are totally uh, convinced that no, no, mutual fund is not the place, let me pull all this money and go to a bank, the bank also underlying investments are the same entities. So, you are changing the entity, but the underlying holding on a AAA perspective may not change dramatically. So, like I said, I think we have to all step back and uh, keep emotions a little aside and look at hard data in assessing, and I think you guys are doing a, do a lot of research on the underlying portfolios, in stripping portfolios down to the bare bones and see what is the component of it. Now, if, like I said, if 90% of the industry holds AAA, I think this uh, this incident, and while I don't want to call it isolated and all of that, uh, clearly is limited to those set of funds which may, might be impacted. Now, obviously, there was a little pressure building up on the credit side of the Funds, but like I said, that's limited to close to 60, 70,000 crores only. Uh, please remember, a lot of credit funds hold papers which are double A, double A plus, which banks, any which ways are also buying. So I think it boils down to that literally a very, very thin set of instruments which are completely liquid. Now, if you are looking at that, again, you have to put things in perspective that we are talking of a 13 macro industry in which literally 20,000 crores or 30,000 crores would be in strife. So from that perspective, uh, even on a personal front or the advice we've given to clients across uh, from Friday and over the weekend is that, look, you have to delineate uh, the underlying holdings and funds very, very clearly. And uh, I don't think a one switch, one button press that exit, uh, in our opinion, is the right option. But again, having said that, uh, we really don't want to tread on uh, advisor stores. Uh, you guys are far better place. Uh, to give uh, investment decisions and calls. Gaurav, so, uh, thank you so much for that. <laughs> uh, basically, what you are uh, clarifying to me was that uh, had the RBI not announced this, uh, the uh, the stance would have still been the same, saying that look at the underlying securities. AAA obviously uh, is extremely liquid and is uh, highly traded. 
and if uh, 90% triple a uh, rated schemes exist and you have money in those schemes you are aligned uh, to a much safer uh, portfolio then you got nothing to worry about anyway and now with the rbi announcing this uh, the segments where there was a little bit of illiquidity those segments also now get support uh, uh, for amcs who uh, want to who have higher exposure there and now need are facing redemption pressures so i think that that uh, that's come out quite clearly uh, uh, in our discussion uh, i would like to open the floor up uh, for questions now uh, to our clients if anyone has any questions like with us then sure so there is a first question you may go ahead sir all right sir good morning sir actually i want to ask that uh, will it be any problem with liquid fund and overnight funds uh because of the franklin issue no not really uh, i think both these funds uh, pretty much invest at uh, very very high rated securities uh, so that you know like overnight really is just a borrowing from the rbi it's a tech so there is absolutely uh, zero chance even on mo- liquid funds i would uh, i would be very very comfortable because the underlying portfolios are very very high quality so clearly that five lakh crores which we manage uh, it is absolutely no issue and and please remember liquid funds uh, the size of redemption inflows and outflows are any which is very high on a normal daily basis so uh, we been managing that sort of a liquidity very very easily and when i keep saying we it is the industry and it's not idc thank you sir next questions you may go ahead sir hello sir uh, is that uh, that uh, all the debt funds are in risk here yeah, only that franklin consultant act yeah yeah firstly let me and not that i hold a brief for franklin templeton uh, please uh, i just want to clarify that uh, franklin templeton funds are not at risk from that perspective that money will not be given back like gotham started the okay. the underlying papers are illiquid so if you are holding a illiquid paper and you have to meet redemptions on a daily basis you will start selling at a discount and that is what franklin templeton did not want to do so from firstly from that perspective Uh, the use of the word risk needs to be a little uh, bit different it's not risk from that perspective uh, like i okay. said at the uh, right to my uh, discussions and answers to what bottom is asking uh, the industry today at for certain like crores sits on 90 to 91% of triple a holdings now okay. triple a holdings are are very easily liquidable because please understand in the debt market there are the banks there are large number of insurance companies there is lic there is pf so if push comes to shove they will be more than happy to buy the aaa hold papers from mutual funds okay. i don't think that scenario will come so so i like i have been repeatedly saying you have to split the two instances and uh, not bucket all mutual funds or all other funds including the other funds of franklin templeton into what has happened on friday okay thank you Add to that, uh, okay, as who got uh, who be now stuck in those six funds, uh, it is not that uh, they are looking at the clear uh, loss. Uh, it's just about not able to access the money they want to, <clears throat> and it's about being able and it's so waiting till they are provided that money. So now, Franklin can actually go to the market, sell those securities. without having to be under pressure of selling them at a discount because there is a big redemption that they have to fulfill so because they can sell they can wait a little bit sell the securities they'll obviously get a better price which means they'll be able to uh, offer a better return uh, on principal as well as uh, interest accrued so you know sort of like uh, it's a liquidity issue rather than anything else there is uh, uh, no clear uh, markdown of uh, papers Uh, currently from uh, those six funds and uh, like gorb just added uh, since 90% uh, of portfolios uh, 90% of the holdings are in aaa which basically means for any given fund which is aligned itself to the industry to that extent you'll have to have 90% of the fund aum redeemed for it to then look at uh, things in double and below and try to sell that at a discount and now we have the all when 
uh, so obviously we'll get support from uh, banks uh, funding so i think there is now uh, extremely low risk from a liquidity perspective for such a thing to uh, happen unless there are some extremely high credit risk funds that uh, people are holding with extremely high credit exposure but again i would recommend uh, all our clients to look at the funds we like we have a research approved list of funds uh, that we publish every month and uh, you know we've had the island effect uh, issue we've had the dhsl issue and now uh, uh, you know the franklin templeton closure of six funds and if you look back at our schemes and our research uh, uh, history and recommendation you'll realize that you're in pretty much safe hands uh, when you stick to the funds we like especially on the debt side because we believe that you know thing after half 1% extra he uh is in the so we are extremely defensively positioned on the debt side uh, for our clients uh, for the last uh, i would say 3 4 years and uh, sometimes our clients may come to us saying that you know your funds the funds that you are highlighting don't give the highest return but that that is a conscious decision because we want uh, Uh, to recommend those funds which are extremely uh, skewed towards uh, triple a and that's why lower return thank you uh, the next question is you can go it sir uh, right sir i want to ask another question that what will be impact of franklin issue on hybrid funds uh, is there any fear and second question is that uh, what will happen if people actually there is a fear in the market so what will happen if people started to withdraw their money Uh, so rapidly then what will be impact on the debt funds so i'll take that uh, question bottom so uh, for the first question what is the impact on fd funds in the hybrid uh, like i stated uh, it would be unfair for me to comment on the valuation guidelines banking templates to be using or applying uh, i would uh, urge bottom to uh, connect back to fd and then be able to send you the answer uh, on the second point uh, if the question is if there is a massive redemption across uh, debt funds what how will you manage if i hear that right so like yes. i said uh, the issue broadly is to be split into currently we are having the issue on being able to sell investment papers which are illiquid and these are typically investment papers which ratings are say double a minus a and below like i said the industry holds very few Uh, of this in the total 30 lakh and now with rpi opening up a window the bank we can always go to a bank and ask for a special line of credit which rbi has released now moving on to the bigger holdings much mutual funds have which is triple a now like i said mutual funds are one of the participants in the indian debt markets the bigger participants continue to be the banks insurance companies pfs and all of them and all of them are more than happy to buy triple a if there is a high quality triple a now what could potentially happen if there is a massive run on money firstly like i said no financial services industry in the india or in the world has the ability to manage redemptions beyond a certain amount of threshold so even if you to walk up to sbi and 80% of people want to take their money from sbi sbi will not be able to pay this is a respect of the size uh Having said that, typically if we see more than heightened normal redemption, we can always sell. The impact could be limited; that your the realization value could be hit a little. So instead of earning one six uh, percent, you could end up making five percent or four percent, depending on the discount at which we sell. But we can sell. That's the bottom line. I just like to add to what Garu said. So I was just having this discussion over the weekend with a colleague. and wondering whether what has happened with fp is like the start of a fire sale you know uh, is this uh, is this what going to lead to everyone trying to sell and redeem and get their money back um, we have to keep one thing in mind and this happened on the evening and monday morning one working day difference with one working day government entity has stepped in uh, i am in my experience i have not seen such a turn from time uh, from government uh, enterprises uh, while i hold rbi sebi and our regulators in extremely high regard for whatever they have done for the industry over the last 10 to 15 years uh, action is really swift and uh, it just goes to show the uh, 
uh, the support that mutual funds as a product itself has from the government because uh, they understand that it is a common man product and they don't want the retail investor to get spooked to uh, to have an unpleasant experience uh, because of uh, you know incidents like this so if in one working day they can step in to provide this kind of comfort i think uh, if this let's say if there is a fire sale and if there is institutions pulling out um, doomsday scenario happening i'm sure the regulator will intervene uh, with uh, uh, more drastic measures to ease uh, investors so uh, i think uh, one should rest sure on that point i don't think that is that should be a point of concern anymore uh, one could definitely, uh, uh, as clients, reach to investment specialists and mutual specialists to understand the uh, holdings of your papers and also to check whether the schemes are part of our research recommended uh, products. Uh, and if they are, then uh, you know you can uh, you can breathe a sigh of relief. Uh, on the other point that you made on hybrid funds, uh, yes, there is an impact. Uh, Franklin Templeton has marked down, but. On the whole, uh, if you would just hybrid funds in general, again, the hybrid funds that are invested in uh, uh, in debt funds that are uh, stable, that are delivering uh, return, that are in the liquid segment of the market, uh, there is no impact there. So I would just like to thank uh, all clients for attending this call. Uh, I, it was organized on a short notice uh, given that we, we realize that some of our clients will be extremely worried about uh, what is happening to the debt fund holdings and whether they should stay invested, should they put more money, should they take everything out. Uh, and hopefully this call has been able to address your concerns. I'd like to thank all of you uh, once again for coming in and especially like to thank Gaurav for uh, coming on a call uh, at such short notice. IDFC is an extremely important partner for us. Uh, and uh, their schemes are part of our recommended list as well. Uh, historically, if you look at the debt schemes, uh, they've been extremely well managed, uh, and you see that uh, their schemes uh, feature uh, prominently in our research-oriented uh, picks. So when it came to setting up this call, IDSC was our uh, natural choice. Uh, so thank you, Gaurav, so much for uh, taking the time out and uh, uh, talking to us about uh, what happened. Thanks, thanks everyone, and thanks for coming. in house research desk may or may not subscribe to the same views and may have different recommendations to offer. Statistics mentioned during the session have not been verified by ShareCon. This conversation is for educational purposes only. The information and views shared herein is not intended to be and must not in isolation be taken as the basis for an investment decision.